Off we go. There are nine basic direction symbols. The first one is a plane rectangle that means movement is in place. It's not traveling into any direction in space. So if you're walking in place, you're walking under you. If you're doing a releve in place, you're staying where you are. Okay, so there's no spatial travel signified at all. Okay, if you add a, an upward pointing chimney to that rectangle, it indicates forward movement. Walk forward, the arms move forward, face focus forward. The opposite is true for the symbol with a downward pointing chimney. Okay, it's indicating movement clearly that goes all together? Back. Okay. Backwards movement. So far, so good? All right. If the symbol points to the right, just like an arrow, then you're moving to the right. Same is true for the other side direction, moving to the left. Now, we have to take care of some other directions than just forwards and sides and backs. We have to think of diagonals, all right? Because often you move in a direction that's somewhere between front and side, right? Moving on a forward diagonal, moving on a backward diagonal. Okay. The diagonal symbols point where they want you to move. Here, this one's pointing in this direction, right forward diagonal. Okay? Pointing this way, here we go, with the left forward diagonal. Okay, so between front and side to the left, this way. Okay, please notice that you don't turn, if you, if you see a direction symbol, you don't turn to the diagonal and move forward, right? The direction is described in terms of your body. So if you see a diagonal symbol, and this is where I'm facing, I don't turn at all. I just move on the diagonal. Do you understand? Yeah. OK, the backward diagonal symbols point again toward the diagonals. They indicate, Marcel, <laughs> check me on this. We're going, this is our right back <laughs> diagonal and left back diagonal. Okay, that's it for direction symbols. Question so far? No. Okay, added to the direction symbols are levels. Levels of movement. There are three basic levels. Low, middle, and high. If a symbol is solidly colored in, it means the movement is in low level. It's deep movement. If you were moving forward in low level, you would be moving forward in plie. If you were gesturing your arms forward and low, they would be gesturing deep forward but deep toward the floor. Right? If your focus was side and low, you would be looking, again, slanting down. Okay? Yes. All right. The opposite of that is high level, which is striped. And the stripes always go down the same direction, from light right to left. If you're walking in high level, you're walking in releve. If you're gesturing an arm in high level, it's moving up, slanting up toward the ceiling. If your focus is in high level, it's a lifted head. And in between these two, you have middle level, which just has a dot in it. Middle level basically means parallel to the floor. Right? If you're walking in middle level, you're not changing the relationship of your center of weight. Right? You're just walking without plie, without releve, staying in the same level. Middle level gestures will be neither slanting down or slanting up, but parallel to the floor.
Okay, so what is, what's this direction and, and level? Le middle level, what direction? Left side. Okay, what would this be? <laughs> Which level? Yeah, high level. Okay, let's put these symbols on a staff and see how they get used. The symbols are put on a staff that is three lines, three vertical lines. And when you're reading, you start from the bottom and read upwards. The center line of the staff is very much like a center line in your body, dividing right from left. So everything that is to this side of the center line is about the right side of you. It's about your right arm, your right leg, your, your right shoulder. Everything that's to the left of this center line is about the left side of your body. Okay. The most important information it, for a dancer to know is how am I supporting myself? Am I standing on one leg? Am I standing on two legs? Am I sitting down? Am I rolling on the floor? What are my supports? Is once you know how you're supporting yourself, you can add any kind of gestures that you have to. But if you don't know how you're standing, you can't begin to, to read the rest of, of movement detail. So the supports are written right along the center line as the most important information to know. The first thing that, that you look at is you're reading a score. So right supports will be along this side, and left supports along this side. Generally, when you're dancing, clearly you're moving on your feet. I mean, there's, there, there are dance styles like... Um, what are you calling this? Break dancing and, and, and gymnastics, where you're supporting on a lot of different parts of you. But in general, in a ballet dance or modern dances, you may go to the floor, but 80% of the movement is still going to be standing. So what will be along the center line, unless you're told differently, is your feet. Right? How, so it's mostly your feet, how you're standing. All right, so what am I doing here? Stepping. Stepping on what foot? Right foot. Left foot. Stepping in which direction? Forward. Stepping at what level? Releve. If I want to stay there and I want to balance on this foot and I want to do an arabesque or I want to do a batma or something, put a hold sign, which is a little circle over support. It means hold it. Stay there. Maintain that support while other things happen. What's happening here? Step back, step together. Step back on your right foot. Yes? Keep your right foot on the floor and your left foot steps in place. All right, so I'd be doing this. I'd be stepping back on my right foot, hold it there, keep it on the floor my, while my left foot steps in place. Do you understand? Or is it mysterious? No, not at all. Okay. What's happening here? Okay, constantly moving to the side. To which side? Constantly moving to the right side. Always in what level? Ah, uh, I'm sorry, yes, it's hard for me to, to color in so solid. <laughs> I mean, if it's high, it's going to be really striped. So constantly moving in low level or in plie to the right. All right? Now, if I did that, and I'm going right and left and right and left, could read it that way, but what's to prevent you from reading it this way? Right and left and right and left. What was the difference in what I did? Yeah, you don't know whether to cross back or to cross front. Okay, there's a little pin that you can add. 
Here's the dancer standing here. If the pin points up, it means cross in front. All right, anything that points upward, like these upward pointing chimneys and the forward symbols, means forward. So here you're crossing in front. Here's the dancer again, standing on this point. That step crosses in front of the dancer. So that's very specific. That choreographer is saying, I want that sideways movement to be crossing in front all the time. If you wanted to do the reverse, change the pin. Here's the dancer standing on the point and the, the pin going down, saying, look, when you cross, I want to make sure that your step crosses in back of you, crosses behind you. If you want one of each, like this, you're going to do grapevine. <laughs> okay, here we're talking on the grapevine. You're going to be stepping and crossing front, stepping and crossing back. Make sense? Okay, one last thing about hold signs. That hold sign can be used on one foot or on two feet. Suppose I'm standing like this. How am I standing? Yeah, I'm on both feet. Both feet are in place, so I'm, I'm feet together, just standing in place, place middle, right? When you see this, it should pop in your head, feet together, so you have to figure it out every time. If I want to stay like that, while I do wonderful gesticulations, oops, not with feet, but with arms, you can put a hold sign over both columns like this. That means both feet are holding. All right, let's see what we've got so far. You can tell which direction you're moving in. What is it about the symbol that tells you what direction you're moving in? When you look at the symbol, how do you, how do you tell direction from it? By its shape, OK? Which, what what it, its shape is. OK, so how the symbol is shaped tells you which direction you're moving in. How, do you, how does it tell you what level you're moving in? by the shading, whether it's dotted or solidly colored in or striped. It tells you what level you're moving in. And how do you know what foot you're moving on? How do you tell right from left? Right, good. So where the symbol is on the staff, its placement tells you what part of the body is moving. Now, one last point. When you're reading a score, most of the time you're told what your starting position is, because you're often waiting on stage in a position, or you're standing in the wings, and you need to be prepared to rush forward. So they're going to have you in a starting position where you're, you're standing on one foot ready to go. All right, a score will, will generally tell you how to begin. The starting position will be the first thing you see at the bottom of the score. It's in a little box at the bottom. And there are two lines above it. That double bar line means this is where the dance begins. Okay, so movement begins here. at the double bar line, meaning what's before it is how you're preparing for the dance. Initial position, exactly. OK, so why don't you be brilliant? What initial position am I in? I don't know yet. <laughs> Let me get position first. Second position. How do you know it's second position? That's right. You got one foot to the right. You got one foot to the left. OK, so you've got one foot to each side. Make a certain amount of sense? The staff tells you timing in a very clear way. 
Each count is marked off with a little tick across the center line. Excuse me. So each of these spaces is a count. Count one, count two, count three. And after count three, I'm going to put a bar all the way across the staff. That's telling me that that's the end of a measure, that this dance is going to proceed in units of three counts. A one, two, three, a two, two, three. So take a look at this and tell me how you would count this dance. Right, bars of four. You can have any number of counts. If your dance is counted into fives, you have five counts in each measure. But it's something you want to look at instantly. It's a, it's a way of knowing what, what your meter is. Otherwise, how can you read a score? You'll just be fumbling around. So one of the first things you want to look at when you, when you pick up a score is how many beats are in each measure so you can begin to count the movement that you're seeing. 